A 5 meter tall steel column has a rectangular cross section of 18 centimeters by 24 centimeters and is fixed on both ends. What is the critical buckling load for the column? So there's a few search terms that are useful to know here. One is critical buckling. Put that into the reference handbook. Also just column. There's a whole section on columns. And another one that I'll throw in there is Euler's formula, which you do need the parentheses. And these all point to the same general direction, which is toward this formula here. P sub CR, the critical buckling load for a column, is equal to pi squared times the modulus of elasticity, which we can find in the table typical material properties, times the moment of inertia. We've got to talk a little bit about that one in this case. Divided by K times L quantity squared, where K is something called the theoretical effective length factor. And you need a hyphen for that as well. So theoretical effective dash length factor. I tend to just remember a length factor and search that. The point being that you have different end conditions. Here we have fixed on both ends. And when you're fixed on both ends, there's a little list there. It tells us that the K factor should be 0.5. If you're pinned on both ends or fixed on one end and pinned on the other or free on one end, there's a whole bunch of different permutations there and different corresponding K values. L is simply the unbraced length of the column. In that case, that's going to be the full five meters. So we're good on K. We're good on L. We know we can look up E. The only thing that's interesting here is the moment of inertia. And it's not interesting because the geometry is particularly hard. All this is is a rectangular cross section, and it's 18 by 24 centimeters. But the reason we have to think about it a little bit is because it's not obvious which way the beam is going to buckle from the perspective of calculating the moment of inertia. We have to think about it conceptually. So if you imagine putting a vertical force, this is a bird's eye view of the cross section looking downward on the beam. Which way do we think this beam is going to buckle? Is it going to splay out the top or the bottom if we push down into the screen on it? Or is it going to pop out left or right? Well, if you think it's going to pop out left or right, you'd be right because it's smaller in that dimension. So what we want to say then is that we expect the moment of inertia about the y-axis to be smaller than the moment of inertia about the x-axis. We expect that ixc is going to be greater than ixy, and the critical buckling load is the minimum load that will cause buckling. So we want to use the smallest moment of inertia. So we're going to use ixy instead of ixc. And if you're not sure about that, then you can remind yourself about the equation. Ixc would be bh cubed over 12, whereas Iyc would be b cubed h over 12. So to get a smaller value, you're going to want to cube the smaller number. If you cube the h being 24, you're going to get a larger number. If you cube 18, you're going to get a smaller number. So this is the one we want to use. We don't want to use this. So with that in mind, Let's go ahead and make our substitutions. I am going to put these in meters. So the base, instead of 18, I'll put it as 0.18 meters. And that quantity is cubed. And then for the height, it's 0.24 meters, all divided by 12 gives us a moment of inertia in the y direction of 1.166 times 10 to the negative fourth meters to the fourth. And that's everything we need to plug in for the critical buckling load. P sub CR equals pi squared. We looked up the modulus of elasticity for steel, 200 GPA, which is 200 times 10 to the ninth. Pascals times the moment of inertia, the minimum moment of inertia that we just found, times 10 to the negative fourth meters fourth, divided by the quantity K, 0 0.5, times L, the unbraced length, 5 meters. That's a 5, not a 6. Sorry about that. And that quantity is squared. That all works out to 3.67 times 10 to the seventh newtons, which is approximately 37 mega newtons, 37 times 10 to the 6 newtons. Answer choice C.